five seconds. Stand by, we're on look at attack. Ten seconds. Do you see raise attack? Attack going up, start 22, should be red one full side. 15 seconds. Half down, eight shallow, well, see by local four knots. Stack clear, attack out up. So your target set up, Master 22 warship bearing 008 range, 8,000 yards, course 221, speed 15 knots. Assign selected. Solution assigned. Roger, request down on Alpha. Alpha, shoot bear. 32 feet. Cut 223. Charlie shoot bear, 081. Fire 5 2. Fire 5 2. Safe fire key of fire. Fix on the pool of air reduced. Stand by. 5 2 5. Head to run. Remember head to conduct 5 3 to be a gun. Weapon bearing 2280. Loud. Target bearing 328. Wait. AC navigator. EP updated. Pool of air reduced. You have 4.2 miles to the take position. Speed may good, 3 decimal 2. Speed required, 3 decimal 1. Recommend stand on. This course broadly involves being assessed in competencies both tactically, operationally, but the entirety is focused on command itself. So once we've proven we're capable of doing each of the events that we do at a tactical level, we then reassess uh, as command and oversee other people do that to make sure that we can do it first and then can we do it in command and make sure that it's going to the level and the experience that it's supposed to. From a submariner's perspective, it is the toughest course that you can do. Internationally, the submarine command course from any nation is, is definitely regarded as the pinnacle of a submariner's career. To achieve the submarine command course is a major milestone and it is the, the ticket to command. It's a four-month course, 11 weeks at HMAS Stirling in the simulator. Uh, then we come to sea and we do a one month uh, sea phase where students are put okay. through the paces right. and all so aspects of submarine warfare. The simulator plays a huge part in this uh, course. We did 10 of 12 weeks in the simulator and the benefit of it is it allows teacher to tailor each of the events to the student's capabilities and experience. He can increase or decrease the level of difficulty as required, something that is much harder to achieve at sea. Basically testing us on everything we can expect to, to face at sea uh, as a CO of a submarine. Um, it, it's geared largely towards our, our operational profile, uh, which is a step away from what we were doing with the European courses here. It's really geared to uh, what an Australian CO can expect to see. Um, so it's been brilliant. A lot of thoughts gone into the course. A lot of time in the sim, um, so high pressure, close in warship uh, activity, and uh, then stepping into sort of the more, more covert activities. It's, it's basically Everything you can and uh, will need to do in a submarine we've done in the simulator and uh, we're hoping to replicate some of that in the, in the sea phase again. The difference between, I guess, submarine command and command of a surface unit, for example, would be the submarine captain is truly uh, exercising autonomous command. He is, or she, is alone. Uh, there is no reach back to shore. Uh, decisions uh, have to be made on the spot. Your instructions that you're provided when you sail, that is, what, that is all you've got, and you have to be able to function as the last man. Uh, the idea of mission command on board a submarine is uh, the greatest privilege that you could achieve within the submarine force as far as I'm concerned. And uh, the responsibility is, is, is huge, and the accountability is, is something that you've got to get used to and you've got to accept, because when it comes to submarine command, failure is not an option.